pop culture. Everything is permitted. Welcome to episode 49 of Everything is Permitted here at Wade's Comic Madness. I'm your host, Julian Brown, alongside my co-host, the Man of Steel, Matt Reppert, and the Master of Puns, Brittany Tomes. How we doing? I'm having a great day. Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good so far. I got to go down a bouncy slide like a few hours ago. I was at a birthday party right Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that. That was fun. I was trying to think of what time of day it was. I was picturing like 3 a.m. Julian's outside <laughs> just like sliding. I was up late working on a, a, something I'm going to talk about in just a, a second here. But uh, I mean, I probably would have gone down a bouncy slide at 3 a.m. I was close to being up. Woohoo! Uh, also joining us right now, he's here. He might interject when he, he feels uh, the need to go a little Shakespearean. I don't know. Kevin Upper a is going to join What's us up, for, for yeah, the when entire When the need strikes, I'll, I'll, I'll interject yeah voice. but kevin is gonna be on our main segment uh which is our big picard review uh so i'll, I'll just get down to uh, what we're talking about this week on the show we have a great show as i mentioned first jean-luc picard <laughs> get off my brain <laughs> <laughs> is back on the television on cbs all access thursdays at 12:01 a.m right uh if you want to stay up late and watch it uh, before you go to work you the should. next day, you yeah, should. Right. Uh, and we have our review of the premiere of the very first episode. We'll be joined by Mariah Gossett from our new friends over at the Star Trek Discovery Pod, as well as I just mentioned, Kevin is here joining us as well. Once again, he was on last week. Mariah is why I call it the way. Yeah. <laughs> I want you guys to be friends so you can just theorize. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're both going to help us go over all the details of what was, we all think, a really strong opening episode of Star Trek Picard. Also, our friends over at Geese with Kids recently went over Matt Moore's top 10 films of the decade. And, uh, well, we decided we have a Matt, too. We're going to go over his top 10 films of the decade. And uh, with that comes a cool announcement. When we come back from our break in March, we're going to pit Matt Reppert against Geese with Kids, Matt Moore, and decide uh, who has the better top 10. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, the I'm, Battle uh, of the Mats. <laughs> the Battle of the, the Mats. The Matt Endgame. Oh, God. The Matt Game. <laughs> Leave it all on the mat. <laughs> Jesus, God. Yes, that's what we should call it. I, I, yeah. Red alert. All hands to battle stations. <laughs> that's what that's going to be. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm really sad. This is, I'm going to have all the Picard sound bites today. <laughs> uh, it, it, I think it's appropriate. Uh, I don't know. I might not have the time to actually like shame Brittany uh, this episode. We'll see what happens. I think the audience we, will be fine. There, I, <laughs> I think they'll live for one episode. There is there isn't a catchy Picard song like there is Baby Yoda though. So that uh, have we could you have heard our Picard's flute. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we could have the audience record their own "Shut Up, Wesley's at me. I would love that. The "Shut Up, Britney" challenge. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> That's it. Then it's done. It. We are starting the hashtag "Shut Up, Britney" challenge. Send us on permittedpod at yes. gmail dot com, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Your very best. Shut up, Britney, and uh, we might play it on air. That was a great idea. That's actually great. I love it. Wow. Way to shame yourself. I love being shamed. <laughs> That's I'll awesome. do anything for the people. <laughs> <laughs> it's the people that matters. Also, um, announcements. <laughs> we would love for you to support our show. You could do so for free by quickly going to Apple Podcasts and giving us a five-star review. That helps get our show on Apple Podcasts front page. It would mean a lot if you can go and do that. Um, like we mentioned last week, our Patreon program is live. Uh, we said that our show is always going to be free, and that is very much the truth. But if you want to go a little extra, you can join our Patreon, which just starts at $2 a month. And I think, guys, that it has some really awesome perks. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I know we have some stuff planned during our break for our Patreon. So yeah, it'll be definitely a lot of fun. Yep. I mean, the, the Patreons that already joined or the patrons that already joined got to hear cats early. So they did. They got to hear cats, cats early. And that was worth yeah, any that. two or five dollars you <laughs> yeah. put in. Uh, if you go for the five dollar option, uh, you had your first exclusive uh, bonus pod where we sat down a little bit more with Bill Tazi from the Cinescape and talked about some more of our favorite Jean-Luc Picard episodes from Next Generation. And that was a lot of fun as yeah, well. Yeah, it was. So uh, join our Patreon. And then also, we have to do our EIP VIP shout outs. We would like to thank Billy Peets, Matt Moore, Heather Reppert, Nikki VZ, and our friend Rob wanted us to call him by his secret name this week. So we will. Okay. We wanted to give a shout out and thank you to McCavity, <laughs> <laughs> which is what shows up on his Patreon. Oh, my uh, God. Jesus <laughs> You son of a bitch, Rob. <laughs> um, so thank you to all our patrons who have joined our Patreon program already. Big, big announcement for you today. Our brand new website is live. 
and uh, we already have some blog posts on there. Uh, so in a, you know, depending if you're listening to this right at eight, at 8.30 a.m. this morning, um, my Picard review of the first episode, Remembrance, will go live. I know uh, Brittany has some stuff planned as well. Yep. She hasn't Keep written it, it secret, yet. <laughs> Keep it in secret. You'll see it. But there'll be a blog post from her, and maybe... I have, I have Keep some secret. stuff I want to write. So... Uh, yeah, go check it out. Uh, it is live. We think that we've gotten all of the kinks out, but of course, uh, go ahead, play with it. Let us know what you like, don't like. You can email us at permittedpod at gmail.com. Yeah, we'd like to know what you think. If there's any bugs that you find, you know, when yeah, you launch you a website. You can scream at me in public too. That's yeah, fine. That, we'll get that's, fixed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do it all the time. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Playing um, Mario Kart. Just real quick, I have to send two really big thank yous to two friends of mine. One, um, Brian Tudor from the Infamous Podcast. He helped me out a ton uh, building our website. I had to make decisions about hosting platforms and, you know, whether I wanted to go with WordPress or something else. So, Brian, I just want to say thank you to you for helping me out a lot. And then also my really good friend, Cynthia Lynn. She was a big help as well. She uh, she helped us pick out our host and uh, get some initial things started on our website. So thank you guys again. Let us know what you think. Brittany, I'm going to I'm going to. You did a really good <laughs> job. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was distracting. Shame. <laughs> Shame. Julian's being mean because I have ADHD. Well, it's... I, it's, I like, I... She, I just wanted to you, fix it. it no, was like, none of you could see it, but she literally was messing with the, the top of Julian's water jug, and I'm literally the whole time, I'm like, what are you doing? I wanted to make it straight. <laughs> Meanwhile, Doesn't me, that go against your, your... Yeah, my philosophy. Oh, snap. <laughs> Accurate. Just saying. Yeah. I don't know. It just looked askew, so I wanted to... It looks so nice now. I, I, I liked I like it the it. way it was. It was all bent and broken, and you fixed it. I Just don't like the card. <laughs> uh, let's get into some rants and raves. Brittany, I know for ones that you have one raring and ready to go. Well, good news. They're finally making me full-time at my other job. So, yay, woo. Um, oh, am I actually getting a round of applause? Oh, yay. <laughs> Thank you, audience. But with that, I had to take uh, one of those urine tests for, like, drug content. Awful, yeah. I don't even <laughs> take drugs, but whatever. So, um, that we know of, yeah, you never know. Mine's just like sugar. I get do it. Um, but there's an inordinate amount of melatonin in your yarn. (laughs) We're gonna find out. Um, (laughs) so the the hours are just horrible. Like, if you even try to get the weekend hours, it's the only ones you can pretty much go to if you're not because you work all week and you can't make their hours. Doesn't make any sense. So, I had to go during lunch, like my, my one hour lunch break from work. This ended up taking the entire hour. Like, I should have just gone in there, peed, and then like been gone. Peaced out, yeah. But there was, like, a kid who needed blood taken. So, like, three doctors were helping him out. He was, like, screaming his brain out. Oh, my God. And I chugged water before I went because I was, like, I want to make sure, like, when at least by the time I get there. Because I, I figured I'd have to sit for a little bit. So, at least by the time <laughs> I'd be able to pee, right? Now, I had to pee so bad. I kid you not. Like, I started unbuttoning, like, my pants a little bit sitting there. And I was just, like, bouncing my leg constantly. They pulled me to the back. It was, like, another 20 minutes I was sitting in the back. And I actually got up and I peed before the test even. And I still had enough pee for the actual test. So, anyway, LabCorp, if you're out there, please take the people that don't need their blood drawn just have to pee. Take them first. Yeah, and seriously, don't like. Don't call me a rookie. No, no. I, I, tried I not agree to. with Brittany. Is, and and LabCorp, I, I, LabCorp. Get your shit together. Because it wasn't just me. There was another guy that came in. He had to pee, too. <laughs> was and that we were, Morty? It was a whole yeah. hour. <laughs> it was a whole hour, and that's far too long. That took more than my lunch break, and I got back late. So yeah, that's some bullshit. I made them pay me for that lunch break because I didn't get to eat or have any fun. Come on, Bernie. Get your piss together. <laughs> yeah, right? Get my piss together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my oh, goodness. Oh, for you, sir. So, yeah. Half me, half lab corp. I, I Between can like, the two of us, it just wasn't a good experience. Thanks to the military, I can almost pee on command now whenever I have, I've had to do a piss test, we, we used to call it, because I just like, we got hey, we can't, do, we're not doing PT this morning, we're going to do a piss test. Like, okay, let me go into the bathroom. Oh, man. Uh, Matt, rant or rave? Um, So I will rant. So I recently tried to acquire the 1979 movie Rock and Roll High School, which I'd never really heard of, but I did did some research. Is that the did, Rock, 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 Rock? That and I don't Roll know, but the Ramones are in the movie. The Ramones are in the movie, funny enough. Hmm. Um, yeah, and it's a movie all about, hmm. like, from the, from what I read about the movie, I've never seen the movie. I've only read some stuff, and it was a steel book, I'm not going to lie. But, you know, I, I was. Wait, co- it, it was a steel book? I know, right? Um, Did you just say it was a steel book? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure it was a steel book. I know it, it, it is, but 
So, I, but I was, it was only like 20 bucks or something to get it. And for a while, our, our Best Buy had it, but then I didn't get it. And then they had one copy and it, and it vanished. So I had to drive down to the one on Roosevelt Boulevard to see if I can get it, which Ooh, but that one's brand new and fancy. Oh, they moved. Oh, we're getting to that. We're, oh, okay. we're getting, to, right. we're getting about how brand new and fancy they are. Uh -oh. So I go down there because it says there's like the website says like, oh, we, there's like one or two copies or whatever left at the store and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I go down there. I walk around the store for like 20 minutes. Can't find it. Ask a guy. He even looks in the back. He goes, oh, we don't really update our system with movies. And I'm like, how? And I mean, I'm not angry at the guy. I know he's just, he's just a, a dude that works there. So I, I never take my anger. Just out a dude employee. playing another dude playing another dude. Pretty much. This guy is but, another dude. But he basically is like, yeah, we don't really update our movie inventory. Well, I'm just like, like, isn't it done automatically when like stuff is scanned and like the system says, all right, we got in like 20 copies of this movie and 18 have been sold. So unless it's been stolen, obviously, like, yeah, everybody's stealing those specific. I know, right? Rock and roll, I know, like, right? Cool. <laughs> but the but like the guys literally like, oh, I don't think we have, I don't, I don't see it anywhere. And I was like, you got to be. Sh and I literally, so I ordered it on the site. That didn't work because eventually they canceled my order. So, nope, we're out. And I'm just like, you, you guys are terrible at this. I don't know what it is about Best Buy. This is really a, uh, so far, a, a rants and rave segments worthy of. Get your shit together. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're just not the Best Buy anymore. I did have a rave, but it goes with one of our announcements later. So I decided to skip it. <laughs> Oh, damn. But yeah, thank you for wasting several hours of my life, Best Buy. I, I really appreciate that. That was that was how I wanted to spend my uh, Friday after my very long, tiring day at work. I would go wah, 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 but I know that you've been going through some tough shit at yeah. your job and other things. So instead, I will say I'm sorry, and that stinks. <laughs> Our guest, Kevin, do you have a rant or rave by chance? Just a little bit of a rant. I mean, Rant away. Yeah, I uh, just like, so when you're driving and you want to make a left turn, but there's inconveniently two double, like a, a double yellow line mm -hmm. on your, your left side of the road. You don't stop in the middle of traffic to make a left, guys. I just want to point that out there to anybody who's listening who, oh, who yeah, does that. Oh, yeah, it's like a one-lane thing <laughs> yeah. that people can't yeah, pass Yeah, well, you. no, not even, like, just, just yeah. like, you, just you, don't, you, don't, Figure it out. you don't stop when there's people behind you. That would be me honking my horn so loud. Yeah, I, see, I, I, I have no patience for bro, that me too. Shit. Me too. None. Like, well, I'm talking about that, that intersection by the mall right by, uh, like, when you're going down uh, Woodburn Road. Uh, on your left is like uh, Chicken Holiday, and on your right is the the old Aldi's Chicken Holiday. Right, yeah. What? So does everyone else when they're heading south so on Woodburn Road. If you're going <laughs> up uh, Route One Business, uh, on if you go down, I forget the name of the road. It's past Olive Garden. If you go make a left, it's uh, it's right in a kind of dinky looking shopping center, but it's called Chicken Holiday. They do pressure cooked fried chicken and ribs it's really and good. it's oh, fucking okay. fantastic mm. but it's, it's, really it's not worth getting into a car accident over no isn't it <laughs> tell that to all the, <laughs> the americans out there that need their fried oh, yeah, chicken that's it that's it i just i drive that road like three times a week so it's kind of annoying. i got you i have a rave uh it's a very is yours mine rave? my rave i don't think so mine's What's, star trek related it's kind of star trek related it's more about the company oh go ahead I was just really, really excited. I know, Matt, it sucked that you couldn't make it. I know you had to work. But just having uh, Brittany and Kev and Jared over uh, to watch Picard and also, you know, the <laughs> fact that we got $75 worth of Chinese food. Amazing. It was awesome. And what epic. the hell? Oh, yeah. Jesus. And a, you should have been lot. there, man. Yeah, yeah you should have. <laughs> He's like, I had to work. Sorry. That's, that's, I think that's my overtime day. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's uh, understandable. So we, we ate a lot of Chinese food. It was fun. I gave Jared a, uh, a little bit of whiskey in a NCC 1701. He liked that. Uh, whiskey glass with a, an actual circle uh, ice cube. Oh, we got real fancy. Yeah. And then uh, we watched Picard and tried to, you know, get around the fact that Caleb was being a little shit. Caleb was wild. <laughs> so he was wild. He just wanted nonstop if, fortune cookies. If it's I, honestly just my internal monologue I, all the time. Yeah. See, if I had been there, I think you guys would have gotten angry because obviously Heather would have been with me. And like another question Heather asked about Picard is, is Data dead? And I'm just like, I, I might have I might have shot a, a quick side eye <laughs> over at her, but it was fun. It was a blast. She would have known when she turned over yeah. to me, and there's just like tears streaming down my face. <laughs> I'm crying about a robot. She'd been like, oh, oh, oh. But that's no change, Brittany. Yeah, it's true. Data's in college. I cry about every robot. Data's in college. Every Heather, don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, but it was it was fun, and you know, with Caleb, we had to, we had to get around the Caleb situation. So I just kept on like gradually turning the volume up and up and up. 
been up but it was fun it was a blast and then i went uh, i went right uh, here to wades and played some uh star wars destiny even though the game is dead so Woo-hoo. yeah it was fun it was just it like was data just like data oh god damn <laughs> hey remember remember what luke said no, nobody's ever nothing's ever end. nobody's ever really gone exactly so that was that was that was fun the, <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna really keep ends. it at that Here. do we have anything else nope nothing then it is time for the permitted minute <gasps> that's permitted minute Yes. As permitted minute. I figured I figured oh, Brittany would pick up what I was putting down. <laughs> That's good. Okay. It was good, right? Yeah, I liked it. It is the permitted minute, and we are going to go here in five, four, three, two, one. Mr. Gata, start the clock. After fear of being too much like the Mandalorian, Lucasfilm has placed the Obi Wan series on hold, sending the crew home for, from production as scripts get reworked. It's a me. Universal has confirmed Super Nintendo World is coming to the theme park in 2023. And higher, further, faster, baby, Captain Marvel 2 is officially in production. Um, Mr. Peanut died? Is that a thing? Also, after an emotional invitation from Sir Patrick himself, Whoopi Goldberg will return as Guinan in season two yes. of Picard. In Witcher News, the soundtrack for season one will be available on Spotify. A Netflix anime style show is also in development. And then finally, I'm sure he'd say, always look on the bright side of life. So we'll just put it this way. Terry Jones is dead. He's dead and then dead. He has ceased to be. And that's it. We well did it. We yeah, had, that we was, had six, five or six yeah. seconds. I, I will say I love Monty Python's, like their tribute to Terry Jones. They basically just said two down, four to go. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. I, I, I don't think there's any other way to celebrate any of those Monty Python guys. I think, uh, I think Terry Jones would be proud. So. I, I messed up on mine. I was going to say Super Mario World, but I was like, no, it's Nintendo. <laughs> I, I wanted to write Super Mario yeah. World and I kept on having to it's edit it. Mind. Yeah. Um, oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> I love when you do that. You're too good at that. You're too good at I'm that. I'm obnoxious when we play Mario Kart and I pick Yoshi, though, because then I, like, knock somebody off, and I'm like, ah. And Pikachu. Did I even play as Pikachu last night in Smash? It's hard no. to tell, because Bill played it, like, the Yeah, it's time. true. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Bill took that place. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to be reviewing the Picard premiere Remembrance with our guests Mariah Gossett from the Star Trek Discovery Pod and Kevin Upper here. Hey, that's me. We will have that when we come back. We've made too many compromises already, too many retreats. They invade our space and we fall back. They assimilate entire worlds and we fall back. Not again. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. I will make them pay for what they've done. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. And it is time for our Picard episode one remembrance review. We are very excited to be joined by our guest. First from the Star Trek Discovery pod, we have Mariah Gossett on the show. Welcome, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Um, I personally love your guys show and uh, I am a Patreon member and uh, we love what you guys do over there. So, yeah, we appreciate your patronage. Awesome. And then we are welcoming back Kevin Upper to the show. Welcome back. Thanks, man. Glad to be here a second time. Yeah, fun. man. We uh, just we like hadn't. Picard. <laughs> yes, that is right. Picard <laughs> is back. <laughs> well done, Brittany. Bring me back for nine more seasons. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll, I'm, take, I'm in. I'll take nine more seasons. I'll CBS All Access for nine seasons. <laughs> Picard is back on TV. Well, not TV. You have to pay that five ninety nine or nine ninety nine dollars a month for CBS All Access. But he is back on, and we are going to talk about this episode, Remembrance. Uh, real quick, we're just going to go to quick circle. I want to get everybody's kind of like where you are on the Star Trek knowledge base. I know Mariah from listening to your show. I believe like you're a massive Voyager fan, correct? Right. Yeah, I grew up watching a ton of Voyager uh, through my childhood. Janeway has quite a soft spot in my heart, but I also watched uh, a fair amount of uh, TNG. And so I'm really excited that Picard is back. You know, I'm excited to revisit this character and, um, you know, kind of see where we're at after all of the films. So. Yeah. Yay. Awesome. Brittany, you're mostly deep space nine, but I've seen like a fair amount of all the other ones just randomly. Measure of man is Measure like, yeah, man. your yeah. jam. And it, yeah. I still know enough that I can rant about Data and Picard and Classic Brittany the themes rights. forever. Yeah, basically, <laughs> which is 90% of Star Trek. So mm-hmm. and then I, Matt, I know more than you think. <laughs> Matt, I think you've seen everything. I've watched, 
I watched Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager. I never really got into Enterprise. I don't think anybody ever got into Enterprise. Yeah, I watched a, like a little bit here and there. I watched that. I never watched the original Star Trek, so I watched like all of the movies at some point. I've seen all the Next Generation movies in theaters. The only well, thing so. that came out of Enterprise that was good was Admiral Archer's or Captain Archer's prize beagle. I got a beagle, not because of Enterprise, but <laughs> beagles are awesome. <laughs> and then I, I grew up on TNG. I love it. Oh, I totally skipped Kevin. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, well, it's Kevin. been a long road it getting has, from there to here. It has been a long road. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin and you are also you just started yeah. actually watching Discovery but big on TNG. Yeah, well I I started watching Discovery when it first came out um and now I'm picking it back up with season 2 uh when they are bringing out Picard because you know Picard's fucking awesome. But yeah, uh my background is mostly uh, TNG Voyager and uh, uh DS9. DS9. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to say, I, I grew up uh, in my in my Picard jumpsuit uh, in my captain's chair watching TNG as a kid. <laughs> oh, so he's the Wesley. I am the Wesley. I, I am just the impetuous Wesley. child. Um, yeah, yeah. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just really get tractor beams. If you could just let me on the bridge. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> um, let's get into this episode called Remembrance. And then we will start uh, with our first guest, Mariah. Your initial thoughts on on the first episode of Picard? Yeah, I mean, I was really excited. I enjoyed the episode. You know, I think I really enjoyed the fact that we actually didn't really go into space for the whole app. So we really got some good world building. We got to see what's sort of going on on Earth in this moment in time while also catching up on, you know, what sort of happened in the years since we've seen Picard on screen. Um, but not too much like deep dive. So there's some mystery left to figure out as we move through the season. I, uh, you know, I have a, a soft spot for that vineyard life. So that looks dope. I'm yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> Chateau Picard. Like Chateau Picard, sign me up. I will go pick some grapes. Although it looks like they have plenty of robots to do that. But uh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. And along with Robert. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I think there was like some good action pacing. I think they're trying to show that, you know, it's been a long time for Picard before he, you know, he's looking tired. He's older, you know, and now he's getting kind of jumped back into this crazy world where things are happening. Um, we're setting up some interesting plot points. You know, I think we have to remember it is a pilot for a lot of folks who've never encountered uh, Captain Picard before. And so I think they did a good job of showing his personality, his relationship with Data, but not trying to overwhelm someone who's maybe new to the fandom while still getting enough wink nods to people who've been around for a long time. I think you actually bring up a great point that this is very much like a pilot for people who are not familiar with the character of John Luke Picard. I, I think it gives you enough if you've never watched TNG, if you're into basically new Trek coming over from Discovery to be like, okay, this guy, you know, was a big deal. He's not anymore. He made some decisions. Uh, I think it did a really good job. I also just want to quickly touch on the you know, vineyard point you made with all the robots. Every time they showed the robots watering the plants, I just kept thinking to myself, man, Robert would be pissed. Just <laughs> <laughs> Is he rolling around in his grave? As long as they're not diagnosing the grapes, I guess. I don't know. know. <laughs> like he, he was not a fan of all that uh, autom I, automation. Which is ironic because Robert is so close to robot. <laughs> I, see, I see John Luke had some modern technologies. I'm assuming some fire suppression systems are in there. As uh, well. Yeah, because you know they burned in the the fire. Uh, the fire. <laughs> Kevin, your thoughts on um, the Picard episode I think one? Mariah pretty much hit it right on the head. Especially with a, uh, I agree that it, it's a it's a great jumping on point for people who have maybe not necessarily uh, the background that we do and 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 the fandom there. But it, it's pretty easy to to get behind Picard's character so far, you know, like just as a jumping on point, if this is your first foyer into Star Trek, I think it's a pretty solid representation of Picard so far. Um, I, I agree also that um, I, I, I like that it, it didn't take place in space at all. Yeah. It, it's, it's entirely. Except to the very, very, very end. Yeah. Right. I mean, there, there are events that yeah occur. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Which we will. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's it, it's it really to, you know, take after my cousin. It grounds Picard. Yeah. <laughs> no, almost no pun intended. Pun intended. Uh, uh, a little uh, bit of pun know. intended. It oh, does. Oh. <laughs> He's very much on the grounds when you first see him. Yes, indeed. Brittany, your initial thoughts on Remembrance. Well, I absolutely loved it. You know, I cried twice. Yep. A.K.A. just the data Picard scenes. 
don't you look at me, Matt. <laughs> when he said, I don't want this game to end, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I don't either. Man, I feel like it's good that it shows, like, you're not seeing the same Picard as you saw last time when the show, you know, left off with that poker game at the end. Agreed. This is very much a haunted Picard. Like, it's a Picard who's had to deal with these things that happened and him resigning from Starfleet. And he's him. He's at this place where he's loved at his home. You know, he has these Romulans that work with him and all these people. He's at his family home, his vineyard, but he's not happy. So ultimately, you're seeing this defeated Picard who, like, everybody else loves him, but he doesn't love himself anymore. And, like, this is him finding something that he loves to hold on to because you're seeing basically some some other life form out there has some essence of data in them which yeah. is what's like heavily being implied. So like that's something he can connect to and it's starting him on a journey that maybe is he needs to find himself or something to believe in. And his dreams with Data were, he pretty much says in the episode, the the only thing that's really keeping him going. So something that has to do with Data obviously exactly. is going to get him off yeah, his Yeah, he says he's beginning basically. to resent the waking up. Yeah. And I love yeah. that they use dreams a lot because when Data learns how to paint or starts like painting more in the series, he does it to try and figure out this vision that he's having and to try and break it down into something he can express so he can understand what's happening. So Picard's doing the same it's thing. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. Every time he dreams, he dreams of Data painting because Data breaks down what's actually happening, what he needs to find out, and what's happening in it's life. It's his subconscious knowing what exactly. he has to do. And he, he, he's just saying it as his friend is helping him. But like even though Data's long gone, or supposedly, you know, whether or not his memories fully were downloaded or otherwise... It's just awesome. Uh, real quick, before we get to Matt's thoughts, I just want to ask our guests, do did, did we like how this episode opens, you know, speaking so much about data? Blue skies? Yeah, immediately with the, the Enterprise D, you know, the big D, not the E. You know, this was the <laughs> ship that meant the, the most to Picard and Absolutely. then with data playing poker. You know, was this a good opening for both fans of the show and people just starting out? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe so. Uh, I mean, like, honestly, they, they open, they don't even open on the, the Enterprise. They, I mean, it's like maybe it's down like, there in yeah. the bottom corner, but it's like space, yeah, the final yeah. frontier, you know, like it, we all, we all thought it when we saw the scene. I think it, it's probably a little bit more fanfare, I think, for folks who did watch the original, but I think it was like a, a very accessible place for new fans to come in and to see who are going to obviously be the two most important characters kind of and their relationship and how that's going to carry through uh, the rest of the plot for the series. So I think it's a smart entry point. It's going to make um, fans happy and it's not something too, too complicated for, uh, for newer viewers to, to kind of grasp the hold of, especially if they've watched uh, the Children of Mars short track. Yeah, I have to get around to watching that. I haven't watched any of the, the current uh, short tracks. I'm so behind. Brittany, you wanted to touch on something real I just quick. Want to say, to Matt. I like that it opened with Blue Skies because... Data has sang that song in mm -hmm. previous episodes. Like one, he sings it at the wedding. Of in Riker. Nemesis, yeah. yeah. And then also at the very end when he's transferred into Before. And Before. He start, starts yeah. humming it. So then it gives Picard that sense that like maybe a part of Data can still live on. Well, which is sad because. And then it starts off with this. <laughs> yeah. But it's sad because, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, you learn. Before and yeah. yeah, ended up not, you know, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll maybe get into that in I a like little that. bit. But Matt, your initial thoughts on Remembrance. So I really liked it. And unlike everybody here, I watched it with somebody who has like no None. Star Trek experience. Like if Heather has watched Star Trek, it was so long ago. She hasn't because I'll I'll put this out there. And two two questions I was asked is who are the Borg? Are they bad? Yeah, so right. I and I was just like, and you know, I, I'm patiently answering just because I'm not trying to like shut my wife out of watching the show with me or anything like that. And I mean, the reason that Heather watched it with me is because she likes Patrick Stewart. And, you mm -hmm. know, she kind of likes his work that he's done. And also Heather loves the fact that his pit bull is yeah. in the number episode, one, number one. <laughs> number so, one. so, yeah, I, I'm I, I'm watching it with someone who has like pretty much no Star Trek knowledge. So, I mean. One of these days, we'll have to get Heather on to talk about it. She enjoyed the episode yeah, as for well, sure. though. But yeah, number one is life. You could <laughs> argue also that I mean the bar the Borg aren't inherently bad. They're just a really new species. I I, I think the Borg are classic yeah, humans. I don't know. They're probably pretty <laughs> awful, but I, I mean, think yeah, they, they I think just have bad. a parasitic. I love uh, that he named the dog number one. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it shows that even though he's left Starfleet, he hasn't really ever left you know what i mean like he still needed a number one even though he doesn't have that person in his life i actually think they were talking about it on on the discovery pod that you know 
maybe that isn't a good thing that he named his like this is like what his life has become so instead of having like his you know who's his you know literal number one in Riker like he's holding his on dog his has literally glory. become his yeah well that's one. what it's showing it's yeah. his coping mechanism I, but I, I mean I don't really care I love number one everybody does <laughs> oh he was so he awesome he apparently wasn't a good actor though did you see like, I watched, the little yeah. behind the scenes <laughs> <laughs> but he was cute yeah and that's what matters uh real quick uh if i'm gonna kind of skip my thoughts you can read uh my review of the episode on our brand new website which is live now uh our thoughts are uh, my thoughts at least are on that real quick the, the only thing i really want to say is that for the entirety of this episode all i kept thinking to myself was oh man that's that's patrick stewart that's john luke picard and he's back on my tv mm -hmm. and i just you know some of the lines you know when he's getting interviewed you know the oh. And you know, no lives, lives. Yeah. you know, when he's talking with the interviewer is amazing. And when he yeah. tells her off, it reminds me of that scene uh, from Nemesis where he's like, the line must be drawn here. Dude, same. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, you I know? forget exactly what he says, but so, it's the inflection that he brings up at the end. That was just the biggest thing for me. It's like, you know, obviously he's older, he's wiser, he's a little bit more depressed, let's say. Yeah. But he's still Captain Picard and still Sir Patrick Stewart you know, acting his ass off. So yeah. I love that. Let's, let's get into some questions. We'll, we'll go around again. We'll start with uh, Mariah and then Kev, then Brittany and the Matt. Uh, is, is John Luke's departure, you know, we, we know that he was an admiral. He was overseeing the, the Romulan relocation effort. And then the synths attack and the Starfleet, I guess, and not a good move by them, cancels the relocation effort. And Picard, who is usually able to convince Starfleet to change their minds, isn't able to, and because it's not Starfleet anymore in his mind, he retires from the thing that his, he has literally loved the most. So do we think his departure from Starfleet is believable? Like, would he quit the organization that he devoted his life to because it's something that he didn't recognize anymore? I think so. I think it was also probably his last dish effort, you know, to really get them on his side, I think, for this rescue effort. You know, I'm sure I would think the thought process for John Luke would be, okay, I'm going to tell them I'm going to quit if they don't do this. And then they're going to do this, right? Like they can't let me quit. And then when they, I think Starfleet made the decision to not be Starfleet anymore when but, they yeah. let him go. You know, I think that's where that, that fork goes. And I think, you know, they, I always love when people are like, why does Star Trek have to be political? But like, <laughs> it's always political. Like, it's, it's always uh, political. The fans yeah. that say that drive me absolutely crazy Great. because all of Star Trek, and it, dude, if you watch Deep Space Nine, say no more. Yeah, right. Star Trek has always been politically right. It's charged. a humanist, the humanist story. Exactly. Like, the original series has the first interracial kiss on screen ever. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, it's like, you know, this show has always kind of pushed the narrative of we can all be better people to each other if we realize how many more similarities we had. And so, I think, you know, John Luke really represents that as a captain. And, um, you know, him kind of saying, if we're not going to value the lives of these other folks who maybe we've disagreed with in the past and not tried to do something about this, then I can't be a part of this group anymore. Um, so, yeah, I think it's totally believable. I think they're drawing on some really interesting parallels and current events of how we view people maybe we don't agree with all the time as a culture and as a society. And, and I hope people are, are paying attention. Uh, again, I, I'm, I'm forced to uh, agree with Mariah, like uh, how he sends, says he spent like 20 years nursing his wounded pride. I, um, I hadn't thought about it uh, in, in that framing until she just mentioned it. But Picard saying, yeah, no, if this isn't Starfleet anymore. I'm going to leave if you guys don't do this. Like in, in his mind, I, I, I agree that he probably believed that like he just was trying to wake Starfleet up. It was a, it was a bargaining chip, a power mm -hmm. play or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And then he left and realized that uh, he was maybe a little bit of, not to use political terminology, maybe like a lame duck, you know, yeah. maybe like his, he didn't have as much sway as he thought he once did. Like yeah. times, I mean, listen, in any political exactly. organization, in any organization like Starfleet, the Federation times change, right. new powers come in. I mean, listen, uh, so if, far that's been the, the vibe for the first episode of Picard is the yeah. times they are a changing. I mean, yeah. if you want to take a deep, deep cut and go all the way back to best of both worlds, I mean, when Commander Shelby comes onto the Enterprise, oh times are already changing. She's yeah. like a new breed. Mm -hmm. This is what Starfleet right. that's wanted. The, that's the beginning of the paranoia the in Starfleet. The beginning of the end. Yeah. yeah. Real shit. Yeah. In Picard's eyes. <laughs> yeah. I believe that this show is doing the character really well. So I believe that his reasons for resigning are extremely believable. 
anybody who's been in a job or in a position where they've had to leave something because it goes against what they believe in morally or against what they think the organization originally represented will definitely understand this. Like I had to do that with a recent position where I left because I was like, morally, this is wrong. I cannot physically be here anymore. And I left. So I get where he's coming from. And for him, it's also a matter of like his pride being related to it because that was his life. He loved Starfleet and, you know, part of it had to hurt that he wasn't even important enough to get them, like let alone the lives they didn't want to agree to save. He wasn't important enough for them to agree. And part of that is the resources because, you know, the, the synthetics, you know, destroyed a bunch Utopia of ships. Utopia Planitia, exactly. which so, is, you know, where some of the biggest and best starships have been yeah. built, like the Enterprise. So the their Enterprise, reasoning yeah, was yeah. we don't have the resources. You know, these various people aren't going to fund us. So we don't have the money to let you do your mission. Which is interesting because doesn't Picard say in First Contact that the acquisition of wealth, wealth is no longer like the money wasn't a thing exactly, anymore? Exactly, but like you're saying, the times are changing. Maybe they're starting to be Accumulate that way Accumulate wealth again. again. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe it's not so much wealth as it is, uh, like, I mean, yeah, the Klingon Empire, ex, an, right. an empire itself, like an empire can only exist so long as it expands. Yep. Yeah. Matt, anything Matt, the on? US. Um, um, I, I did, I slightly did not care for like turning Starfleet into like a darker entity because I wish there'd been a little more explanation as to why they suddenly backed out of like helping the Romulans because that does nothing but benefit Starfleet if they do. If they had said something on the lines of like, look, after the Dominion War, we just didn't have the, the resources to spare. We we put everything in building this fleet and as soon as they got destroyed, we That's, couldn't help. Well, yeah, you have to remember too, not just the Dominion War, which did deplete a lot, a lot. but also, yeah. you know, basically the second battle of Wolf 359. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was you resources know. and then there was also the public that wasn't viewing the Romulans. So you had these people that already didn't want to even work with the Romulans because of them being an enemy in the past. So you already have that inherent bias. And then you also have the lack of resources and the funding towards saving them. So yeah. He was like, had too many things working against him and he was one person trying to save I, a I, whole. Yeah. No, uh, but I hope that they kind of go a little bit more into that rather than like Starfleet just wanted to be dicks. I think know? they just, might. Yeah. I hope they, they do. Will. Let's yeah. Um, have y'all watched children of Mars? Not yet. I really want to. Yeah. I keep not meaning to. I think if, I think if y'all watch it, it will, I think help explain, I think the way, the public was probably pressuring Starfleet to not move forward with uh, the Romulan rescue. Hmm. So I, That's watch. interesting. That's actually really, I, I got to watch these. I'm public like, has uh, more yeah. power than you think. Uh, again, yeah. I'm gonna just going to hop on the Mariah train. And, and yeah. Agree. We're all, we're <laughs> we're all, all on the Mariah, Mariah train. train. I like it. Um, so the I next like it. Enterprise, <laughs> Enterprise M. Get off my bridge. That was the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Ryan. I meant to do. Sorry. <laughs> it's my bridge now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was meant to be. Make it so. <laughs> um, Ryan, I want to get your thoughts on the character of Dodge who we're introduced to, and, and then obviously her twin sister, Soji, who I think probably will end up mm. being the second lead. Uh, are, are we committed to, to the character of Dodge, the characters of Soji? Do we think she's really dead? Or is the, the focus of this season going to be on finding Soji? So if, if anyone else listens to the Star Trek Discovery pod, you'll know I love a good theory and <laughs> coming up with crazy ideas of what I think is going to happen. So I do think Dodge is gone. I think the twin is going to be the main character we're focusing on for the rest of the series. Um, I just recently rewatched First Contact, and so this is probably why this theory is front of mind for me. I think the reason these two twins exist and the idea of them possibly being a portion of Data's you know, creation or memory or however they're justifying this um, is they might be some sort of synthetic Borg hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, because Agree. if you're in no. contact, they, the Borg are able to put human flesh on data, um, which mm -hmm. was not something capable from Starfleet technology. Right. And the, so the... I think that like weird acid thing, some people thought it was blood. I thought it was more like the dude cracked a capsule in his mouth mm -hmm. and spat at like old school Cold War, like KGB yeah, the, stuff. Yeah. Um, and so... And they're all like, has she been activated? You know, in my mind, it's like, has she been connected to the hive mind yet? Um, and Ooh. does she have all the abilities? And so, you know, especially because at the end, we reveal that the Romulans are using an old Borg cube as this like reclamation site. I think there's something going on with a combination of Borg and synthetic technology and yeah, perhaps... Union Zoom's technology. Um, and so I think, we're going to be following the other twin. I think Dodge is probably gone. We'll probably get maybe some flashbacks to help explain their creation and like how that's going to work. But it is 
um, you know, I think the twin thing, I'm, I'm waiting for a deeper explanation of the twin thing and why that's necessary. But yeah, that's, that's my thought. I, I want to know what the hell's going on with that board cube. Like from every single trailer from Picard, it's just been like, they've been on this board cube. You know, there's a, like there's a sign in there. I think in Romulan or in English that says like something. It's been this many days since, since our last this simulation. Nation. Yeah, since our last simulation. <laughs> yeah, like, no, that <laughs> is telling to me, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead on that. I, I do believe that somebody is merging Nunian Soon's technology with Borg uh, uh, implants. I mean, and, and they're finding a way. Maddox. To, Right. Yeah, it's yeah. gotta be no. Maddox. He disappeared. For real. Where the Quote hell unquote. has he gone? Yeah. You know, like sh- by by the, the 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 show's own admission, he disappeared after the ban on synthetics. Which means right? he's working on. Yeah, synthetics. that means that some you know fucking black government agency probably scooped his ass up. In Section thirty one. Thirty one. Right. Yeah, yep. I, I can never remember the name, so that's why I just you know yeah. just throw that shit out there. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I, I firmly uh, agree. I mean, the, the series is begging for it. You know, yeah. we've got Borg technology. We've got Nunyan Soong's technology. What kind of fucking crazy story could we build if we put them two together? Yeah. You know? A beautiful baby. I think yeah. you and Ryan need yeah, we to get, get together. together. <laughs> like, just theorize. <laughs> that, yeah, I, I would listen to that show. <laughs> um, any other thoughts on Dodge? Yeah, go ahead. I want to say, I don't think she dodged that explosion. Uh, Make it so. I think she Dis- said. Disagree. Okay. Well, you think she got scooped no, up? Yeah, no, because uh, the scene, like, directly beforehand, mm-hmm. uh, they show Dodge throwing a Romulan, or, you know, a, 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 a black yeah, she might clothed not be dead. individual Off, over the ledge, and, they, and they, they, they beam him up. He, yeah. he doesn't hit the ground. Mm-hmm. So I do believe that that might have been a they bit of the They double beamed. Yeah, no, genuinely, yeah, no. like they might, like that might have been a plan, is to make Picard looked, believe that, that Dodge, they killed yeah. Dodge, the was so very that dramatic. they can keep her, and he doesn't look for her. Instead, yes. he focuses yes. on the twin. If that's Let's do if it. that's it, I I like it because I want to believe that Dodge isn't dead. I do think that she is. I mean, I'll, I'll freely admit to having I, like seven thousand like tin foil hats. Yeah, my, of course. Yeah, no, but it's a good theory. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I, I like the theory and I think it would be a cool twist. I just, I, I don't know if the show is going to go that route. I guess we'll see. Yeah. You know? I have a series. Uh, uh, um, I Maybe tend to, to put my expectations above right? the actual writing of shows. Did Mariah, did you say that <laughs> she might get rebuilt? Yeah, like Ooh, if it yeah. if it's like she's damaged in some way and there was anything left, maybe these like the black suited KGB alien people. <laughs> like that, yeah. My my belief is what what those dudes were. They're they're tall Shiar. That's oh yeah. That's the yeah, Romulans. What's left of the tall Shiar. That's left of the tall Shiar. And my my whole theory has been like the reason the synthetics attacked and destroyed is because the Romulans were probably infiltrating or going to do something to the Federation, and they're like, all right, we. But why see. would they? Why would they attack the Federation when they're trying to help? Unless there's right. still that deep hatred for Starfleet and the, I, I don't know. It's I, 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 I feel like I feel like it. Ta- I feel like there's something there's something deeper that the Romulans, even though they were allies during the Dominion War, is that the Rom because remember the Romulans have always been subterfuge. That's always and, been and their MO. the Enterprise helped take out um, Shinzon. You know, well, I mean, yeah. also, I mean, if you really want to dive deep, it'd be like the Romulans discovered that, uh, yeah, the the Dominion never killed that <laughs> That's senator. <right. laughs> it's off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final thoughts, guys, on the Picard premiere of Remembrance. Uh, Mariah, we'll start with you. I mean, I, I'm just really excited. I'm ready for the rest of the series. I'm ready to see my seven nine again. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, I think it set up a lot of interesting plot points. I think it's done a good job of bringing people into a world that they've never been in it before and did a, you know, as I said in the beginning, did the, the just the right of a sprinkling of fan service to keep everybody happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I hope the rest of the series carries that through. Um, you know, I do think with new Star Trek, we get a lot more action. You know, I think we're, because special effects are better, the sets are better, they have probably way more money than they've ever had before. Um, you know, I hope it still retains what they've set up in the first one, that it doesn't always have to be so fast paced, because I think that's when we get the best out of Sir Patrick Stewart is when it's those smaller mm-hmm. one on one acting moments. Um, so I hope we get to see that throughout the series. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin, your final thoughts on Remembrance? <sighs> oh, man, um, I'm just really excited for the rest of the series. I mean, I, I, I it, it has given me uh, a lot of uh, optimism for uh the the cbs all access platform as a whole i think it'll go boldly where no star trek show has gone before uh, just kidding 
Five out of five lights. Shut though, up, guys. Wesley. <laughs> five lights. Five lights. I five love that. Five lights out of five. <laughs> Matt. I loved it. Um, yeah, both Heather and I really enjoyed the episode. Uh, I do think it did a nice balance of the modern Star Trek action, you know, big effects and everything versus the old school, like character moments of like, almost like somebody just doing dialogue on a stage. It, it, it walked that tightrope very finely and very nicely. And I kind of hope it keeps doing that. And I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes from here with that. Same. I'm I'm stoked to see Sir Patrick on the screen again. I can't wait to see what happens. I know we talked about it a lot. I, I'm really thinking that Greg Maddox is going to have a huge role to play in this season. And I think it's exciting Strong that they're going to. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm so excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, Picard airs on Thursdays. I think it, it goes right on at 12.01 a.m. So uh, you can hit it on CBS All Access or you could be like Matt which we won't say on air uh, and do it in other means. But uh, before we go, I want to thank uh, Mariah and Kevin for joining us again. And real quick, Mariah, where can we find you and the Star Trek Discovery pod? Yeah, so we are Star Trek Discovery podcast. We're available wherever you get your podcasts. We also are doing um, live stream reactions this season. Uh, so if you find our YouTube channel, you can subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you'll get notified when we're about to go live. Uh, so you can see us stumble and stumble and talk all about Star Trek. <laughs> and uh, we have fun action figures. And um, hopefully, if we hit 100 uh, Patreon subscribers this season, uh, we're going to make Grant Picard his head, shave his head, and we will also do that one. <laughs> nice. I want to see that happen uh, so bad. Go ahead. Yeah. And you can follow me on social media. It's at Mariah Gossett. Uh, it's spelt weird. I'm sure it'll be in the show description. I had hippie parents. So there's a line there. There's a start from why. RR, you'll find me. I'm like the only one there. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Well, we thank you so much for joining us. You too, Kevin. No and then we will uh, we'll just uh, let uh, Captain Picard take us out here. Let's make sure history never forgets the name Enterprise. All right. We are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we recently listened to Geeks with Kids and Matt Moore did his top 10 films of the decade. Well, we thought we had a Matt too. Why don't we do Matt's top 10 films of the decade? And then when we come back in March, we're going to pit Matt against Matt. I'm really looking forward to that, but his top 10 when we come back. And welcome back. That was our awesome uh, Star Trek Picard, uh, the premiere remembrance review. And now it is time to go over Matt's top 10 films of the decade. I was listening to our good friends over at Geeks with Kids and Matt Moore put his top 10 films of the decade up against, you know, the entire Geeks with Kids crew. It was a great episode. And I had this great thought. It's like they have Matt. We have Matt. Let's have him face off. But first, we probably got to get your top 10. So yeah, yeah. what we're going to do is we'll go, you know, you'll, I guess I'll say what Matt's was, Matt Moore's was for 2010. Mm -hmm. And then you'll say yours and, you know, we'll talk yeah, about absolutely. it a little bit. And, uh, yeah, we'll figure it all out. So uh, we're going to start right at 2010. And Matt Moore's film for that was Inception. That was mine as well. I had a feeling that you two would probably be on the same page. I, I now for my for my I actually did a top three just because I was like, it's well, hard, right? Yeah, it's hard. There were I mean, some years had more, better movies than others. And I even did some honorable mentions for some years that had a lot of good movies. But yes, I went Inception number one, The King's Speech number two. And a little bit of a uh, dark horse pick on my part. Scott Pilgrim versus the world is yes. my number. Yeah, three. that's a great film. Yeah, I uh, and obviously Brittany and I will go down ours at the at the end after we go through yours. Mine was different, but this is definitely a great pick. I mean, this is probably Chris Nolan top three film that he's ever made. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, and the ending with the the spinning thing like that's still because I remember seeing that in theaters and when that happened and when it just cut to the credits, I heard somebody in the on school what like, <laughs> like scream at the top. That of might have been me. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> Uh, so going, well, do, do, do you agree? 
Oh, yeah, Inception? Yeah, yeah, it was my choice, yeah. but yeah. it's become yeah. so memeable as well, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, that is very A lot true. of contention with that ending. Le- Leo's <laughs> squinting face. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Confused Jackie Chan. Uh, yeah. We'll move on to 2011, and Matt Moore had uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, as so, his pick. So I did pick that, but it was a very close race between that and my number two, Rango. Uh, Rango was my number two, and X-Men First Class was my number three. Um Yeah, I mean, it's like Rango is, if you've never seen it, it's a fantastic, it's an adult animated movie. That's Johnny Depp, right? Yes, he plays the chameleon. It's a fantastic movie. I actually just bought it on my digital service, so I'm going to watch it again. If you guys want to watch it, I can definitely show it to you guys. As I was going through his list and going and making my list for the end here, I had some funny experiences because I was like, oh, man. 2011 was a great year for film and then I'd get to like 2012 and maybe like 2000 I was like oh man these are really shitty years for film um, I, I feel like really, I had I feel, 2012 was like a bigger year for films for me I had 2011 I, I, mean, 2011, I, I was like what is this in, in 2011 I had a bunch of uh a bunch of runners up. I feel like Matt and I are going to have a lot of similarities where we might differ is our two and threes if he ever yeah. does that I think well let's uh let's keep going here for 2012 uh, this is and what, as I was listening to the to, to their episode, this was maybe uh, I think maybe one of his more controversial picks. He had Django Unchained. I just I have Django as my third. Okay, so I did go with Avengers as my number one just because it was the culmination of like I mean obviously it's not Infinity War but it worked. It brought these characters together and it was a very fun to watch story. Very well made. I loved the hell out of it when I saw it. My number two is actually Lincoln. Um, Daniel Day Lewis like crushed it as Abraham Lincoln. Like that's a movie that Heather and I could actually watch again and again. I oh love really? The hell out of, oh, I one, love Lincoln. one and done with Lincoln. I love, uh, dude. We love Lincoln. Like we love it so much. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> because you're making a face. <laughs> because like my choices are going to be vastly different from Matt's throughout this whole thing. I'm realizing now. Uh, I like that though. Yeah, I also, have a studio I thought, Ghibli. you're right. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> but I thought it was funny that you went from Rango to Django. Oh, so like, yes. Rango to Rango Unchained. Yeah, no, when you said Rango, I was like, the Tarantino nope. movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, the CGI uh, gecko or whatever. Um, uh, Matt, I'm going to tell you when, when we're on the same page, because for, for that year, I also had, uh, Avengers had to be number one, just because it was just, it was Yeah, so... I'm not going to, I'm not going to proclaim it like this masterful thing of like cinema, like it's not. You know, it's well, not again, like these I, weren't, you know, yeah, cinema's obvious, best picture. These were, you know, yeah, your, your obvi- best, yeah, obviously, as I said, just for what it was and what it accomplished. Like I did pick Avengers. So let's go to 2013, I believe, right? 2013. Yep, that's where we're at. And Matt Moore had Leonardo DiCaprio yep. and Wolf of Wall Street. I also picked the Wolf of Wall Street. Um, my number two was Gravity, and my number three, which many people probably haven't seen, is Kick Ass Two. Oh, it, I saw it's one. really that's funny good. that. None of those movies 12 are years on my a slave, <laughs> right? Twelve Years a Slave came out that year. I haven't seen it. That explains it then. No yeah. So did some other like, really how? good movies that I'll mention yeah, at the that end. I had a lot. I know. Mm-hmm. I, I that was nowhere near my list. Even though I really liked Wolf of Wall Street, it's just you know I, I kind of base it on like this movie was how very. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I judge yeah. it. I'm like, this is my pick. Well, this yeah, is how it hit me exactly. But Wolf of Wall Street is very much like The Irishman, is that it is very long. I, I like it because one of it's one of those great movies that perfectly does the excesses of the 80s to like the to like because people don't realize how insane the, the 80s were. Scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the quail, I mean, just like the the amount of money that people are making and the insanity of of his you know business of like how people are acting and everything like that's that's kind of what I think of the 80s. Obviously, I wasn't that old during it the 80s but. it's what we like to think of the yeah. 80s <laughs> all i think about is graffitied up uh new york city subway trains and uh Warriors i'm already i already i already predicted the clown that, yeah. that's, that's the 70s how, <laughs> yeah, that's that the good. 70s how dare all of you get that wrong uh, well i don't know <laughs> i was just finishing a good quote man <laughs> damn right uh, let's <laughs> let's move on i feel like we're gonna agree on this one yeah too. i think so too 2014 because I, I know that you love these movies matt moore had john wick Wow, I said Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh wow, yeah, because that that's what I said too. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I have I have the twenty fourteen was the first year that I kinda had to make make some painful cuts out of my top three. I went Captain America Winter Soldier as my number one, uh Guardians of the Galaxy as mm-hmm. my two, How to Train Your Dragon Two as my number three, 
And my honorable mentions, I, and the, as a, these were some painful cuts for me, Big Hero 6, yeah, Dawn, of, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, John Wick, and Edge of Tomorrow. And you just said a bunch of great movies that came out the, this year. There's three. Uh, Ex Machina, Interstellar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. That's Drawing one of the ones goodness, I'm yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be so fun when we, when we near oh, the end of talking Whiplash about. is amazing. I film. liked Whiplash, but I didn't Grand think it Budapest was. Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, I saw that Birdman. <laughs> I'm just naming it all now. Birdman was 2014? Birdman was. I didn't. I actually didn't I think Birdman, Birdman was as amazing as people said it was. I thought Birdman was fun. I thought it, it was, was a really trip. It was yeah, yeah and, and like, like and Michael Keaton like it was nice to see him. Yeah, step back that's that's into more like so a, what it was. That's why I you think. Watch it, it was just like a hey, good to see you back, Mike. Yeah, and yeah. Like, <laughs> Bird, Birdman to me was just like all right. What if we made a movie about what Michael Keaton thought after he was done being Batman? <laughs> right, that's, right. That's yeah. literally that what was it was. It. I mean, with really masterful shots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really liked Birdman a lot. Yeah, I mean, you get Edward Norton and Emma Stone. Uh, is, so John Wick wasn't even good. on your list. No, it, it was wow. an honorable mention. Oh, it was an honorable mention. It was an honorable mention. All right. 2015 and uh i was i was going through this list with karen too and she was really excited by by matt's pick here uh, matt moore had mad max fury road that was my Same. number one as well dude Great. that movie changed my life you will be shiny and chrome <laughs> i live i die i live again so I, yeah, yeah i had to pick that as well back. <laughs> <laughs> so mad max fury road was number one like if you just appreciate how movies are made, like Mad Max Fury Road, like if you read about all the stuff that was that went behind the scenes and they're making it, like one of my most favorite things ever is the actor who played the main villain actually like set up this cult of personality among the stuntmen. Like in their workout thing, he actually had a poster above their workout bench of him in full costume that says, Daddy loves you. That's fucking awesome. And then there was this thing where he's walking around on set and you see all the stuntmen are in their, you know, their, what, what was the name of the, of the, of the, of his little group? Like the Proud Boy, not the Proud Boy. I forget That's their the name. The Dogs, War Dogs. The War Dogs, yes. The yeah. War Dogs. They're all in makeup and they go, Emot! and they're all doing the salute to him and, the, and they're not filming it or anything. And he like kind of <laughs> nods at really them and just character. keeps walking. Yeah, it was, Matt it was awesome. <laughs> um, I love this movie. Karen loved this movie. And uh, there, there's been talk of, of a sequel. Uh, hasn't happened yet. And real quick, on, on Mad Max Fury Road, uh, Geeks with Kids was also talking about that they spawned a pretty awesome video game that didn't get a lot of, uh, get a yes, lot of uh, yes. you know, playing, you know. Yeah, the Mad Max yeah. game. Yeah, I, I, I loved the Mad Max game. It was really good. I never got a chance to play it, but everything I saw looked a lot of fun, especially the car stuff. It's very, it's like a wide open world GTA-ish type thing, but it's it's set in the Mad Max universe. It's like an MMORPG type? It's not of, an not MMO. RPG, it's, it's single player, but okay. it, it's it's a ton of fun. I recommend the Mad Max game. And my number... My number two from that year was Inside Out, was Pixar's Inside oh, Out. That's a good so movie. Good. Yeah, I love that movie, and it's still probably one of Heather and I's greatest inside jokes from when we saw it in theaters. So. Nice. Um, and number three, I put Star Wars The Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. that was a big one for yeah, me, too. Yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead and move on. I believe we are in 2016. Yes. And this is one of the biggest shocks that, uh, that was on Matt Moore's list here. He picked Split. Now, there's some controversy here because his original pick was going to be something that matt and i hated uh which was batman the killing joke uh the movie adaptation wow of, a lot of people didn't of, like that one yeah i, I, I would very much girl. disagree with that. i very much loved the comic yeah but the it's, movie it's changed epic but the movie changed some stuff and it was not good and the bruce the, yeah, Bru the bruce batgirl like, batgirl yeah, thing was just really weird it was creepy but the, what made that controversial is like well was that actually a cinema release which is why he picked split and said mm -hmm. to which I, I i i was uh tweeting together with them and i said well it was released as a fathom event matt and i saw it in theater so i think that would count mm -hmm. but um anyway his his pick did end up being split okay so my pick was uh captain america civil war yes. i i really love the movie i love the fact that there was no like right side in it i mean like i and honestly like it's one of my favorite moments from the marvel movies is when um tony finds out that you know that bucky killed his parents and like he's like you know look he didn't know what he was doing he's just like no i don't he care killed, he killed, killed my, my mom. mom like awesome delivery by robert downey jr um it, this was actually a battle for number one because my number two is rogue one a star Ooh, wars story that was my yeah, number that's one that my was number that, one. like the two of them were that's duking it out one. and my number three is arrival yeah if you've never seen arrival it's i a did fan. not like too. arrival it was a beautiful visual film i did not like it though yeah I, and my honorable mention for that year is deadpool 
Yeah, Deadpool was my game. number two. Well, it makes yeah. sense Guys. that you would have a soft spot for Arrival as a, a language major. Well, right? that's why I loved it, yeah. because yeah. linguistically it was mm-hmm. amazing, and I called the plot twist before they happened because I understood <laughs> language. And, and I was like, oh my God, is this what's happening? And then they revealed it to happen, and, and I was like, yeah. The guy who wrote Arrival actually posts on an internet forum I frequent. Like, he's been there oh, for nice. years. Yeah, so it's funny to hear him talk about it, you know, because he's talked about it a little bit, and he's talked about how surreal it was for him to go to the Oscars and kind of be yeah. nominated, so... I'm really disappointed in the both of you that friend request was on neither of your list for this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh you guys God. didn't ask me to build one. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to be on any top list no, anywhere. No, no, <laughs> no. Except no. for top worst bargain bin movies. Well, of all time. I came yeah, across that. That is uh, my top 10 bargain bin movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is literally. Ten, we haven't even listened to 10 yet. <laughs> it is literally in my notes here when I was writing it down as a joke. I went, friend request, low, 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 low. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to, by the way, I just have to say, like, I completely disagree with you on Civil War. It is probably my least favorite MCU film. Just, I, I, I don't know why it's fun. I think it's a good, I think it's really good. It's just not like blow me away where the like Winter Soldier was. Mm. Yeah. Winter Soldier is still like yeah. top tier for me. Let's go to. 2018. No, 2017. 2017. Did I skip? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And by the way, get out Julian. Because that film came out that year. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for the sound bite. You know what? I think I earned shut it. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> That's, there's a record for how many shut up Wesleys we've had on this episode. Sorry. Brittany, it's really funny that you said get out because Matt Moore's pick for 2017 was get out. So get out is an honorable mention for me. My number one is Logan. Yeah, like Logan is like was a fantastic way to wrap up the Wolverine Hugh Jackman character Patrick Stewart, you know, obviously as a pretty much mentally broken Professor Xavier, like killed it. Awesome. Uh, I had Logan as my top pick as well. Yeah, Yeah. Logan. Logan was my number. Logan was my number one. Um, The movie Coco was my number two. Have you ever seen Coco? Coco? It's a fantastic movie. And as Brittany said, I'll make you cry. My number three was a movie not a lot of people saw in theaters, but Blade Runner 2049. Yes, that's that's on my list as well. It's a fantastic, fantastic movie. Visuals are amazing. My honorable mentions for this for 2017 had quite a few were Get Out, Thor, Ragnarok, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man Homecoming, and John Wick 2. Wow, you skipped two really big ones I'll talk about at the end. Atomic Blonde. Not on my list. Never saw that. It was so good. Atomic Blonde oh, you guys really would good. love it. Charlie's Theron kills it. Yes. And the soundtrack is amazing. We were right. both talking about it because we saw it together. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that movie like twice in theaters. Moving on to 2018, Matt Moore had Avengers Infinity War. Yeah, I, I did as well. There is no way it could have been any other movie. I, I, I would put Infinity War I as I would put Infinity War as the best Marvel movie that has come out. So obviously, very much would be my best movie. There of was a much better comic book movie. Yes, there not was. much better, but so there were two much better comic yeah, book so movies. So Spider Man Into the Spider Verse yes. is my number two, and if this were any other year, like Into the Spider Verse would have crushed number one easily, like no questions asked. And my number three actually was uh, I know a very divisive movie, but Solo, a Star Wars story. I really enjoyed <laughs> I it. Like that it one. I enjoyed it really film. hurt me not to put it on my list because I really enjoy it, but mm-hmm. I just didn't think it was like you know what I mean. Yeah, and it my just wasn't quite there. And I had two honorable mentions, and that was Deadpool two yes. and the movie Upgrade. Upgrade. My top movies Ooh, were Deadpool Upgrade's two. Good. And Upgrade's Into a good movie. Upgrade's a really fun movie. My girlfriend and I just watched that like last month. Yeah, yeah it's it pretty solid. Yeah. I love Upgrade. And then finally, we're at the big year in our last year, 2019. This is going to be an interesting for for you because you just watched this. Matt Moore had The Lighthouse. So, yeah, I don't have The Lighthouse anywhere on. Like, and yeah. I, I've already <laughs> said. I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll probably honestly, I'll probably write a blog post about The Lighthouse breaking it down. Yeah, and should. like, as I said, I, I, as I said in my initial like little snippet review that we put on the Facebook page, Lighthouse was beautifully shot artsy as hell Willem Dafoe and Robert Pat like if you watch the lighthouse and think that Robert Pattinson still can't be Bruce Wayne Batman I don't know what to tell you like that's he, what I keep hearing like yeah. he he was great in the movie both him and Willem Dafoe were amazing together but as I said in my review about it the plot just didn't make enough yeah. sense and was like way too artsy and like oh what are like I can appreciate AMC that autism a, film I can appreciate that to a certain point but I don't you know but my best movie of 2019 was Dr. Sleep like Dr. Sleep, 
Mine was Doctor Sleep. Oh man, I I, it, it, is, it is absolutely which on is surprising my list. because I was Joker hardcore the majority of the year until I saw Doctor Sleep. Yeah. and I was like shit. Yeah, Doctor Sleep like and Joker is my number two, and Avengers Endgame is my number three. With my honorable mentions being Zombieland, Double Tap, and Shazam. I'm sorry. Hold on. It technically came out in 2019, 1917. Mm, I go. I put that in a, that 20, is a 2019 20. movie. I gave it. Get, it got it a got limited. Nominated, it got nominated for the Oscars. Yeah. Well, g- I give two shits about the Oscars. Um, <laughs> Kill me with that. I know. I I already told you my reasons why I don't like the Oscars. Well, you're watching them this year. Uh, no. I, yeah. These are. This is going to be a great showdown when we do this episode because you guys have. You have some some same yeah we got like the beginning it seemed like he and I was about to say oh my god are we gonna have the same movies every year because this is not gonna it definitely go well. did not no we ended up different uh, places Brittany you and I are gonna go down our list we'll we'll go ahead and start with you what were your uh, your top ten films of the decade we're just gonna go quick yeah just one time yeah. okay Inception for twenty uh, twenty ten yeah do you want me to read the year ten yeah please okay, twenty ten Inception twenty eleven Hugo twenty twelve Silver Linings Playbook twenty thirteen Twelve Years a Slave twenty fourteen Ex Machina 2015. If you want to touch on any of these, you can real quick. Nope. Just, okay. Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> if they want to know, I'll write it in a blog post or rant later. Uh, 2016, Star Wars Rogue One. 2017, Get Out. 2018, a tie between Deadpool 2 and Into the Spider-Verse that I can't possibly choose. And then 2019, Doctor Sleep. Yeah, that's that's a good list. Absolutely. Uh, I think kind of similar to Matt's. No, no? She, no, she has some movies. So like, I never saw 12 Years a Slave, right. so I couldn't, yeah. I actually I couldn't put it It is hard it because, like, it does depend on what you saw that yeah. year. I just picked the ones that I really enjoyed or that I thought, for me, were the best. All right, here we go. Uh, my top 10 films of the decade. 2010, The King's Speech. Great movie. Uh, mm-hmm. That movie yeah. bored me. Oh, God. Uh, great acting just i didn't care in you and you could have read your honorable mentions you could read them after uh 2011 i had captain america the first avengers my honorable mentions being uh moneyball and girl with a dragon tattoo with daniel craig i never saw it was it was really good you should do that Mm -hmm. yeah so 2012 i also had the avengers and in my uh, honorable mentions i had silver linings playbook and skyfall yeah i had Mm -hmm. yeah uh so 2014 None of y'all said it, and I'm disappointed. Frozen was my <laughs> top film. Yeah, mm, of that I, w- year. I wasn't blown away. And by then Frozen. I know it's very, you know, you either love it or hate it. My uh, honorable mention there was uh, Man of Steel. I loved Man. Neither of Steel. of those were even on my list. I know, that disappointing. That was a big year for me. Where Where are we? 2015. Yeah, now you are. 2015. We had uh, I had The Winter Soldier, which is probably my top two, three favorite films of all time. Winter Soldier is 2014. Yeah, dude. Ooh, he fumbled. Did I fumble? He I think you skipped bit. 2014. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You're right. I did. Frozen was 2013. So, yeah, 2014 was the Winter Soldier. So, 2014, I had the Winter Soldier. And then my runner ups were Days of Future Past, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Interstellar. I think I know what messed him up. In 2013, I said 12 Years a Slave. So, 2013. I don't know. Something messed me up. Uh, that was 20. So Mad Max was uh, 2015, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. So 2015, I had Mad Max as well. Great movie. And then uh, Runners Up, Force Awakens, and The Martian. Ooh, I had Room as a runner up. You guys ever seen Room? With the movie will with mess Brie? you up. Yeah, I yeah. I can only, that. You can only watch that once in your life, and then you're with like, Tommy I'm done. Tommy was so? No. <laughs> 2016, one of my favorite films of all time, Star Wars Rogue One, or Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Runners Up, so many great films that year. Uh, Deadpool, Doctor Strange. A movie you guys probably didn't see with Michael Keaton, The Founder, about McDonald's. I watched, like, Heather and I watched a bunch of that, but we kind of got a little bit... Bo- I wanted to keep to finish it, but Heather was, like, bored to tears, and she's like, I want to turn it off. So. And then, as I said, uh, two of our bargain bid movies came out in uh, 2016. Okay. Uh, Friend Request and The Great Wall. <laughs> wow. What a great year for cinema. What a, fi- what a fine year for movies. 2017 um, was Logan. Great. And then uh, Runners Up were Ragnarok, Blade Runner. Spider-Man, Last Jedi, It, Dunkirk. Yeah, put it in there. Dunkirk was awesome, and Get Out. 2018, uh, this is where I differed from you, Matt, for Infinity War, even though it was amazing. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse absolutely was my, my film of that year. I have to agree with that. Uh, yeah. yeah just, that movie is like probably one of the best superhero movies ever, ever made, if not the best. Uh, Rudders Up were Infinity War, Black Panther, and... A Star is Born with Lady Gaga and oh my Bradley Cooper. I, I still have only seen that movie one time because it's still I can't too fresh. watch. Yeah, I can't yeah. watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> right now. It Never hurts. seen. And then I had to do a tie for 2019 because it was such a great year for film. 
Doctor Sleep was my uh, runner up, but my tie for best film of 2019 was Endgame and 1917. Endgame being because I went to see that three times in the theater and each time it it hit me and I cried with Tony and uh and Natasha like it just I I loved 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 Endgame. And I know you didn't That's fine. I'm not uh, No, I know you no, no, I know you're not. I just I To I, me it was just a cinema event and experience. To me it's which, not a good film though. Mm. See, I, and I still think that 1970, I, like, I go when a movie was widely released, not when, like, its first is, like, released in, like, t- two theaters Getting in out New of York and Los Angeles. Man. I know, I know you're, you like doing the technicalities, but I would it, call listen, 1970 Listen, if, if it missed movie. the Oscars deadline, then I'm, I'm all about it, but it didn't. We're going to so. fight. Well, it's called we 1917, not 2017, <laughs> so and, uh, it came out in Like, the Avengers and the movies and stuff. Guys. This is going to be fun. Like I'm stoked for you and Matt to go head to head here. I'm um, curious. We're going to have to figure out how the judging system is going to work, but uh, it's going to be good. Anything else on the top 10 before we wrap up? No, they're just some years. It was, it's a lot harder than others. Cause like you'll have one year where there's like 10 amazing films. And the next year you only have four amazing films. Then you're like, this is rough. <laughs> That's all it's going to be rough <laughs> guys. I'm really excited about next week. You know why? Why is that? It's our 50th episode. Yay! Next week is our 50th episode, and we're going to be uh, recording on location. We Ooh. are going to, I'm going to butcher the name, and Rob will yell at me later, Mizu Axes, and we are going to do some axe throwing and uh, some other fun water? stuff. Oh, God. Mizu is water in Japanese. I, I probably butchered no, the no, name. No, no, it's okay. I was just yeah. like, cool, water uh, axes. That's okay, but we are going to throw some axes. We're going to have some fun, and uh, we'll have episode 50 for you next week. Uh, Check us out at our new website, everythingispermitted.com. For Matt, for Brittany, and for Kevin. Hey. Yay. I'm Julian. You guys have an awesome night. You can find Everything is Permitted on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Everything is Permitted is produced by Rob Migliaccio, Nikki Vizi, and Geneva Stein Shivers. Our executive producers are Michael Cox, Brittany Tomes and the Tomes family, and Julian Brown. <laughs>